Welcome to your complete beginner's guide for the DJI Pocket 3. Now this camera gimbal combo is tiny and you can take this with you anywhere you go. And once you have a complete understanding about how all the features work, you'll be able to use this gimbal to capture a wide range of footage. Now before we jump into the first section, let me just give you a quick outline of what you're going to find in this video. So first I'll just explain a little bit about using a gimbal and then we'll talk about everything that you'll find on the camera itself. And then we'll go into some of the additional accessories for this camera and then I'll go into the menu and the functions and we're going to go through everything that you'll find on the screen and how you can access all the different menus and all of the different features. From there we'll go into the different recording modes that you have available. We'll go into the three gimbal modes and how to use them. Then we'll talk about tracking, spin shot, the DJI Mic 2 transmitter and at the end of this video we'll talk about one of the biggest mistake creators make when working with a gimbal and then I'll dig into how you can actually walk with a gimbal to get stable shots and we'll go through gimbal moves that you could start using right now. And so if you're ready, let's get into it. So let's talk about what makes this camera different than any other camera that's out there. The DJI Pocket 3 is a camera gimbal combo and a gimbal is used to get super stable footage. The, the purpose of putting your camera on a gimbal is so you get those super smooth shots where the horizon is always level. And a gimbal does this mechanically versus digitally. So there's no weird warping going on with the footage that has this really professional quality. Now the difference is with the Pocket 3, the camera is integrated into the gimbal itself. And on this camera, you have a one inch sensor. So you have a larger sensor on a super small camera gimbal combo that allows you to be able to take this with you anywhere and keep it in your pocket. Now with the different features that you're gonna find in the Pocket 3, you'll be able to move and manipulate this camera to be able to get a wide range of shots that you can't get just hand holding a camera. And also with a gimbal, it opens up the opportunity to do tracking where you can set the camera down and the gimbal on the camera will continue to move and track a subject. This gives you the flexibility to follow a subject in the frame or do things like a motion lapse where you have the camera doing a time lapse, but it's constantly moving through that time lapse. So you get some really interesting footage. And when you're working with other cameras that have internal stabilization, like action cameras or smartphones, you could get super smooth footage, but it's not the same as working with a gimbal. Working on those cameras, it's doing a digital crop in and reframing to get your stable shot. Whereas with a the gimbal, there's no cropping and reframing. The three axes on the gimbal do all the stabilization mechanically, why a gimbal looks more professional than doing a digital stabilization. And the fact that this camera is so small and tiny gives you that professional quality in a pocket size camera. Now for the next section, let's go over everything that you're gonna find on the Pocket 3. So there's basically two components to this camera. You have the body, which has the screen, the buttons, and holds the battery. And then you have the camera and the gimbal. Now with the screen on the Pocket 3, it swivels. So when you hold it in your hand, you could just flick it open and the camera's gonna automatically turn on. Now, now you'll see underneath the screen, there's a red record button. You could press this button to turn on and off your camera as well. Now, when your Pocket 3 is turned on, you'll see that the camera will automatically move into position and start stabilizing. Now on a gimbal, there's three different motors that keeps your footage super stable. There's pan, which moves the camera left to right. There's tilt, which moves the camera up to down. And there's roll, which controls how much the camera twists left and right. So these three motors work in unison to be able to keep your footage exactly stable, depending on which settings you have turned on the camera. Now for the buttons on the right, you have your shutter button. This will start your recording or take a photo. And this is also the button that you can use to power on and off your gimbal. Now next to that is a joystick and your joystick you could push in any direction and you can also press in. And when you double tap on the joystick, it's gonna recenter the gimbal. So if you move your gimbal say to the right, you could double tap on that and it's gonna bring the gimbal back to center. Now with this joystick, you could have this set up to pan left and right or tilt up and down, or you could change this by tapping on your screen. And now when you push up, it's gonna zoom in. And when you pull down, it's gonna zoom out. Now on the bottom of the Pocket 3, you'll find a USB-C. So this is gonna be how you charge this camera. It's also gonna be how you can connect directly to a computer. Or if you wanna connect audio into this camera, you can do that through the USB-C. And I've had a lot of questions about the original DJI mic, and you could use the original DJI mic if you connect it via the USB-C here on the bottom. Now on the side, you'll find a micro SD card slot. There's no internal memory, so you'll have to always use a micro SD card when you're working with the Pocket 3. Now, the last thing that you'll notice is where your microphones are. There's a big one right here underneath where it says Osmo. So when you're doing vlog style content and recording yourself, it's gonna pick up clean audio 
of you. All right, so now I'm doing vlog mode. This is just with the normal lens that comes on the Pocket 3. There's pinhole microphones on either side and one on the front. And so when you're filming with the Pocket, you'll just wanna make sure that you're not putting your fingers over any of these microphones so that you can get clean audio. And you can have it record the front, the front and back, or all of the microphones and you could choose between a stereo or a mono mode when you're working with this gimbal. And so that's everything that you're gonna find on the Pocket 3. And so now let's go over some of the different accessories that you can get with the Pocket 3. And so if you get the basic Pocket 3 kit, you're gonna get a couple things with the Pocket 3. The first is the handle with the quarter 20 mount. And this allows you to connect the Pocket 3 to something like a tripod. Now it also moves the USB-C so that you can have this gimbal on a tripod and still be able to connect power or audio while you're working with the gimbal. Now you'll also get the hard protective case, which allows you to protect the Pocket 3 when you're not filming. And this is great to use to always keep your gimbal safe when you're transporting it, say, in your pocket or in your backpack. Now there's other accessories that come in the creator combo or you can purchase them separately. And the first is the battery handle. So it's the same as the normal handle. However, this has an internal battery. So the battery life on the Pocket 3 is 166 minutes and the battery handle extends it by another 100 minutes. Now this has the same quarter 20 on the bottom and it also moves the USB-C from the bottom to the front of the gimbal. Now you'll also get the soft case which holds all of the accessories plus the Pocket 3. So when you have more accessories, it might make sense to put it in the soft case. However, if you're just taking the gimbal with you, then the hard case makes sense. Now one of the other things you can get with the Pocket 3 is the new DJI Mic 2 transmitter. Now this connects automatically to your Pocket 3 so you don't have to connect anything extra. It uses a Bluetooth connection and as soon as you've synced it up once, every time you turn on your wireless mic and the Pocket, it's gonna automatically sync up. Now this wireless microphone gives you the ability to walk away from your camera and always have clean audio. And on the DJI mic, you have a backup recording. And I'll go through more features around this DJI Mic 2 transmitter so you can see all the potential when you're working with a wireless microphone. Now there's also a wide angle lens that you can put on front of your camera. And this is gonna change the field of view from a 20 millimeter to a 15 millimeter. So it makes it much wider if you need a wider field of view. Now DJI also made a black pro mist filter, which is gonna give a softening to your image and any lights in the image are gonna bloom. So like the sunlight here, you could see how it's blooming compared to without the Black Pro Mist. Now you'll also be able to attach things like ND filters using the magnetic mount that's right on the front of your camera. And with the hard case, there's a place for your wide lens and there's a place for your Black Pro Mist. So they could just mount directly inside here. So you could carry these two filters with you whenever you're out filming. Now there's also another attachment that allows you to use this with the prong system. So if you wanna attach this like you would an action camera, you can use this with all of your other accessories. So that's everything that's currently available for the Pocket 3, but I'm sure there'll be a ton of accessories for this camera available soon, if not already available. In this next section, we're gonna go through everything that you find on the screen and where all the different buttons are to be able to control the gimbal. So when you turn on the gimbal by either flipping or powering on using the power button, it's gonna automatically go to the main screen where you can start filming from. And you can change what happens when you flip the screen. And I'll show you how to set all that up in a little bit. But first, let's just go over everything that you're gonna find on the screen itself. So in the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna see your micro SD card and you'll see how much space you have left on the card. If you're in video mode, it's gonna show how much time you have left to record in your current settings. And if you're in photo mode, it's gonna show how many gigabytes you have left on your micro SD card. Now moving to the right, you're gonna see two icons. The first one is a rectangle, and this is showing you whether you're filming in horizontal or vertical mode. So right now it's showing that I'm shooting all horizontal, no matter which way the screen is facing. I can go into my menu by swiping down and clicking on this button here in the lower left-hand side, and this will change your rotation. So right now it's showing horizontal. I could change this to do vertical. And so now this is always gonna shoot in vertical, whether your screen is horizontal or it's vertical. You could click this another time, and then there's another option for auto rotation. In auto rotation mode, you won't see any icon in the upper right-hand corner, and when you're in horizontal, it's recording horizontal format. When you switch to vertical, it's now shooting in vertical format. So if you're someone who's gonna be switching between horizontal and vertical, this is a good feature to keep on. So the screen is always dictating which way that you're shooting. Now moving right, there's a battery indicator. You can click this and it will show you how much percentage you have left on your battery. Now underneath that is an icon that says, 
one X. So this is your zoom. You can click this. And now when you push up on the joystick, it's going to zoom in. And when you pull down on the joystick, it's going to zoom out. Now you could click the two arrows on the right hand side and that changes your joystick to do direction control. Now anywhere that I point the joystick, the gimbal is going to follow. So if I point up, the gimbal is going to tilt up. If I point down, the gimbal is going to tilt down and I could push left and right as well. Now when you're in the zoom mode, you could push left or right with the gimbal. However, it's the up and down that changes between zooming and tilting. Now in the lower right hand corner, that's your selfie mode. So you click this, it's going to go into gimbal rotation. And now the camera is going to be focused on me behind camera. Now I could either tap that button again to rotate the gimbal back forward, or I can triple click on the joystick. So you click three times and the gimbal is going to rotate back to the front. I can click three times on the joystick and the gimbal is going to turn back around into vlog mode. So there's two ways to flip the camera backwards and forwards, either a triple click on the joystick or that button in the lower right hand corner. Now, right now I'm in photo mode, so you're not going to see anything on the bottom of the screen. However, if you click the little camera icon in the lower left hand corner, it's going to bring up the different recording options that you have in this gimbal. So you have panorama, you have photo, you have video, you have low light, you have slow motion, and you have time-lapse, motion-lapse, hyperlapse. So let's switch over to video mode. And now you're going to see that in the lower portion of your screen, you're going to have your resolution and your frame rate. So depending on which mode you're in, there might be some information down here on the bottom of the screen. Now, right above the camera icon is this little square with the four arrows on it. You're going to tap on this and it's going to bring up some advanced shooting modes. So you have face auto detect, you have dynamic framing, and you have spin shot. And you swipe left to get out of that menu. Now I'm going to show you how each one of these works a little bit later, but this is how you access those three additional shooting options. Now, if you're in auto exposure settings, you can tap anywhere on the screen and a little yellow box is going to pop up and that's what you're going to be exposing for. And that's also what you're going to focus on. Now you can double tap with your finger and that's going to set up active track. So if you want to just track something in your frame, you just double tap on the screen of what you want to start tracking and it's going to draw a box around that object. And then it's going to start tracking. So no matter where you move the gimbal, it's going to keep that object centered. Now I'm going to talk about tracking a little bit later in this video, and we'll go into a deep dive into all the different features you have when it comes to tracking. And you just tap once on the screen to get out of that active track. Now beyond the features that are on the screen by just tapping around, you can swipe. You can swipe down, you can swipe up, you can swipe right, and you can swipe left. So when you swipe down, it's going to bring up your menu. And there's eight options on this menu. Now in the lower left-hand corner, there's a gear icon and that is an even deeper menu. So this would be your advanced menu options. Now, when you swipe right, it's gonna bring up your exposure settings and also some audio settings and some focus settings. And if you wanna go into D log M, which is a flat color profile, you set that up here by going to pro mode. And so if you're not in pro mode, you'll only have a few options here. You'll see pro at the top is not highlighted. Underneath it, it shows there's a glamor effect. And when you turn this on, it's gonna smooth out features of your face. It's gonna do some auto enhancing. I've never really used this, but if you're doing a lot of vlogging, maybe it's something you play around with. And then underneath that, you have some ways to adjust your image. And so when you click on this, you have an option for default or custom. You can change your noise reduction and you can change your sharpness. So if you don't want the camera to do some auto noise reduction or you don't want it to over sharpen your footage, you can bring it down here. And it goes to minus two for both, or you can boost it plus one on both. Or you can just go back to the default and that's the settings that DJI has set up. Now, when you click pro at the top, it's going to go into pro mode. So this is going to give you a lot more options. There's two menus up here at the top. You have exposure, which is a little aperture icon. You have audio, which is a little microphone icon. In the exposure, you could set auto or manual. And when you go to manual, you could set up your shutter speed and your ISO. And in auto, you have the option to set your range of ISO on the right, and you could set your auto exposure value on the left. So what this is, is when you go up, let's say plus one, it's going to take what the camera thinks is best looking exposure and then add one stop of light. And you can also do the reverse. So you can bring this down to say negative 0.1. So it'll take what the camera thinks looks best and then bring it down by a stop of light. So if you think that the scene is being overexposed or underexposed, you can go in here and just set it to go a little bit brighter or a little bit darker instead of going full manual control with your camera. So it's an auto setting that just makes it easier to get the exposure dialed in properly for the scene that you're filming. Now, next to your exposure is your white balance. You could either set manual or you can set auto. Underneath that, you have the glamor effect. And then you also now have a color mode that's popped up. When you click this, you could do HLG or you could do D log M. And when you shoot in D log M, you're gonna be shooting 10 bit 420 footage so that you can color grade this footage later in your editing software. Now, when you scroll up in this menu, you'll see two more options. You'll see focus mode. You can click this and there's a few different options here. You can either have single focus, 
you could have continuous focus or you could have product showcase. Now product showcase is a feature where that anything that's close to camera is gonna become in focus. So if I'm sitting here and the camera's focused on me, if I hold something up like this, it's gonna automatically snap focus to that object versus staying locked onto my face. So this is a good thing if you're holding stuff up in front of camera or there's gonna be objects in front of camera and a person and you wanna make sure the focus is bouncing to whatever's closest to camera. And then next to that is your image adjustment modes and this is where your sharpness and your noise reduction are. Now, when you click the microphone at the top, you're gonna to have a few options. Where it says channel, you could do a stereo or you could do a mono recording. Now, next to that is a noise reduction. So if you're in an environment and you wanna bring down the background noise, there is an option to do that in camera if you don't wanna do it in your editing software. Now, underneath that is what direction you want the audio to record. So you could record front, which is just in front of the camera. You could record front and behind, which is recording on both the front of the camera and behind camera, and then record all, which records in all directions. So make sure you set this up for how you want the audio to be recorded when you're out filming. Now, if you go into photography mode, the options are gonna change a little bit. So we'll swipe right, and now you're gonna have a few different options. Now, if we take it out of pro mode, there's no options. It's just pro or all auto. So we're gonna click pro mode. Now in photography, you have your exposure, your white balance, but underneath that, now you have format. So you could change it from JPEG, or you could do JPEG plus raw photo shooting. And then next and then next to that is your focus modes and you have continuous or single. And so there's no product showcase in this mode. Now the next menu is swiping up on the screen. And when you swipe up, you're gonna bring up some different features depending on photo or video mode. In photo mode, you could change your aspect ratio from 16 by nine to one by one, and you can change your timer. So you could have it count down three, five, or seven seconds. Now when you're in video mode, you swipe up, this is gonna be your frame rate and your resolution. So in this mode, you could go up to 4K, 60 frames per second, but if you wanted to do slow motion, you have to go into your actual slow motion mode, swipe up, and now you have access to 4K 120 or HD 240. Now when you swipe left on the screen, it's gonna bring up previously recorded footage. And so when you're in the footage, you could tap in the upper left-hand corner, see all the clips and scroll through them. You could select one, you could hit play, you could also scrub through this footage, forwards or backwards. And then when the footage is paused, you could favor it by clicking the heart in the lower right-hand corner screen with, or you could go back to this main screen, select any of these shots and delete them. So if you wanted to look through your footage while you're out filming, you have a few options to be able to favor it, delete, and just look at what you've previously shot. And so anytime that you're in this swiping menu, you swipe the direction to pull up the menu and then you swipe the opposite direction to get out of the menu. So the last thing we'll go over is swiping down. And this brings up your main menu, these eight boxes. The first one is custom modes. So any mode that you're filming in, you can save it as a custom preset. So when you click on this, you can see that I have a few saved already here. And you could delete these by clicking the trash icon in the upper right hand corner. Or if you wanna save a new one, what you wanna do first is set up all the settings that you want for your custom preset. Then go into this menu and click the plus icon. It'll bring up the screen and you hit confirm. Now you've saved a new custom preset. To access these custom presets, you click in the lower left-hand corner and where all your options are for your different modes, like photo, video, panoramic, if you scroll all the way to the left, you now have all your custom modes that you have saved. And so if you're always filming in the same way, I would set up some different custom modes here so you could easily just turn those on when you're out filming. Now the next option is for screen rotate and capture. And so when this is turned on, basically what happens is when the camera's turned off and you flip the screen open, it's gonna automatically start recording. And you could set up which mode you want it to start recording in. So I'm just gonna choose one of these customs that I've set up, hit the back button, swipe up to get out of this menu and close the screen. Now the camera's turned off. When I flip it open, the camera's gonna power on and it's gonna start recording in that mode that I have selected. And then when I'm done, I could close the screen. It's gonna stop recording and shut off. And so this is good to have turned on to just have one of your settings set up so that you never miss a shot. You just flip open the camera and it will start recording automatically. Now, when you're in this mode and your camera's turned on and it's recording, you can also hit the record button to cancel and then it's gonna power off. And so if you don't want to start recording automatically, you'll press and hold the power button and it's gonna turn on and it's not gonna start recording. So basically you'll have to use the button to turn on and off unless you're trying to specifically record when you flip the screen open. Now the next button over 
however, is your brightness. Mine's set to 11%, but if I'm outdoors, you could make this super bright so you could see the screen in bright situations. The next option is for face tracking on when it's in selfie mode. So when you go into that gimbal rotation vlog mode, you can have this button turned on and it's automatically gonna start tracking my face as soon as the camera flips around and sees a face. Now in the lower left-hand corner, that's your advanced menus. So we'll go into that in a second. Next to that is your rotation mode. So right now mine is set to horizontal. So that means every time I'm shooting, whether the screen's horizontal or it's vertical, it's always gonna be capturing horizontal footage. You could switch this to portrait only or vertical only. So now whether your screen is horizontal or vertical, it's gonna always capture vertical content. And then the last mode is that swap, that auto rotation. So when you flip the screen, it changes which mode that it's filming in. Now the next mode over is the speed at which the gimbal responds to movement. So this is called rotational speed and there's three options. There's slow, default, or fast. And so if you want smooth cinematic motions, you'll keep it on slow. If that's a little bit too slow for you and then the gimbal's not keeping up, then you'll put it at default. And if you're chasing fast moving objects, then you'd wanna put it on fast mode. Oftentimes I just shoot with the default, unless I'm trying to get really slow footage and trying to really hide the movements of the gimbal and, and trying to make the gimbal as smooth as possible. And so when you twist with the gimbal or you tilt with the gimbal, it's gonna take longer for that camera to follow that rotation. And the goal is to take out any sudden jerks and movements because if you wanna get more professional looking footage, you want it to be smooth and you don't wanna have any jerks in your footage where it's bumping around and moving too fast. Now the last button is your gimbal modes and you have follow all, you have tilt lock and you have FPV. So in follow mode, it's gonna follow tilting up and down and panning left and right. In tilt lock, it's only gonna follow when you pan left and right, but your tilt is gonna stay level at the horizon. And then in FPV, the camera's gonna twist left and right. So you have your horizon dipping in either direction and it's also gonna follow your tilt and your pan axis. Now I'll do a section where I'll explain this a little bit more in detail so you can understand how to use these modes to get the best footage when you're out filming. Now back on this main menu screen, we're gonna to go to our advanced menu and we're gonna have a few options here. You can see there's a whole list of options. And so at the top, you have your microphones. So if you have your DJI Mic 2 transmitter, when you power this on by pressing the power button on the side, you'll wanna press and hold the link button at the top of this until a blue light starts flashing. You'll click one of the two transmitters at the top of this menu and you're gonna wait for it to automatically pair. Now you'll see your battery percentage and you'll also see how much data you have on the DJI Mic 2 transmitter. And you'll also see this green bar, which represents the audio levels for the DJI Mic 2 transmitter. Now, when we go back to your main screen, you'll now see that green bar also on top of the screen. So you'll see it whenever you're filming to, to be able to see the levels of the audio that you're recording. Now in the wireless mic menu, you have a few options to be able to control the DJI Mic 2 transmitter. So you have two transmitters here, one and two. So you could have two people talking on camera at the same time and use two separate transmitters to record onto your DJI Pocket 3. Now underneath that, you have some settings for the DJI Mic 2 transmitter. So you can turn on the LEDs or you can turn them off. And so that's the little light on the transmitter itself. You can turn these off so that you have no lights glowing. You also have the vibration. So the DJI Mic 2 gives a little bit of vibration depending on which mode you turn on. So if I click the backup recording, you'll feel a little vibration on the actual transmitter. This is good to know so that if something happens, you'll feel the little vibration. Now also there's an option for audio to video sync. This is really cool because what that does is when both are powered on and linked up, if this option's turned on, whenever you hit record on the Pocket 3, it's gonna automatically start backup recording on the DJI Mic 2 transmitter. And so that way you're gonna have the same time for each recording on the backup as well as on the Pocket 3. And underneath that, you have an option for a low cut filter. And also you can turn on 32-bit float recording. Now this option gives you more range in your recording to have more room to edit in your editing software. Also, if there's a lot of audio that's dynamic, very high, very low, it's gonna record all of it in a way that's gonna allow you to edit it easier in your editing software. It gives you more data to work with. Now back to the advanced menus, the next one down is gimbal startup direction. So you could have this set if you want the gimbal to say be forward, backwards, or the last setting. If you always want your gimbal facing forward, have it be forward, or if you always want it facing you, say you are using this for vlogging, you can always have it point to you whenever you power it on, or it's just whatever the last setting was when you turn the camera off. Now the next option on this advanced menu is rotate screen to power off, and it shows you a time. So you've noticed when I flip the screen closed, there'll be a two, one, and then the camera powers off. You can switch this so that it just automatically powers off, 
or you could switch it to never so that it never powers off so that whenever you rotate the screen, the camera stays on no matter what. Then you'll have to use the record button to power on and off your camera. Now the next option is selfie flip. So whenever the gimbal rotates towards you, it's gonna flip the screen. Sometimes this is easier for when you're recording yourself and you wanna have that image flipped so that it feels more natural when you're filming yourself. Now underneath that is your wireless connection. So it's all your information about using that wireless connection. So if you're using your phone with the DJI Mimo app, you're gonna connect using a wireless connection. And we'll dig into the DJI Mimo app in a little bit later on in this video. Now underneath that you have wearable mode. So if you're wearing this gimbal or using it in kind of this POV way, you can turn this on here and the camera will always be set to POV shot whenever you're using the camera and you can double tap on the screen and it's gonna recenter the gimbal. Now the next option down is for gimbal calibration. So if there's anything wrong with your gimbal, it's not working properly, you'll just go through, set this down on a flat surface and then don't touch it and it's gonna go through and calibrate the gimbal. So it will just take a few minutes to go through and make sure all the motors are working properly and everything's calibrated right. The next option down in this advanced menu is your joystick speed. You could change how fast your zoom is and how fast and how fast your movements for your gimbal are. So you can make this faster or slower depending on how fast you want the camera to zoom in and out or how fast you want the gimbal to move when you push the joystick in any direction. Now also you've been hearing that there's sounds every time you're clicking buttons on this gimbal. You can turn all those off by going to your sounds and you could switch from high, medium, low, or you could completely mute. The next option is for grid. And when you turn this on, on your main screen, you're now gonna see a grid and you'll see that it's set to thirds. So if you want a grid while you're filming to be able to compose your shots a little bit better, you can turn this on and be able to see those grid lines on the screen, but they're not gonna be recorded in your footage. Now the next option is for anti-flicker. So if you have some flickering lights in your shot, you can go in here and set which hertz they're at. You have 50, 60, or auto. It's gonna auto detect if there's any flicker and try to remove it. Now the next option in your advanced setting is for timecode. So when you're recording, it embeds timecode into your footage. This is an advanced feature that's gonna help you sync this with other cameras that have timecode functionality. And there's two ways that you can do timecode. You can either plug in using the USB-C and set a specific timecode based on other devices that you're using, or you could do time of day. And so once you connect this to your phone, it's gonna set that time of day. And then you could click this little button on the side and it's gonna sync it so that your timecode is set to that time of day timecode. Now, if you wanna see your timecode while you're filming, you can turn on your display here and you can also reset your timecode here at the bottom and it's gonna to go to zero, 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 zero. So you could reset back to zero if you don't wanna do time of day. I'm gonna click the little icon and now it's gonna switch back to time of day timecode. Super cool feature that they've included in the Pocket 3, which makes this very usable in a wide variety of settings because now you can sync this up with more professional level cameras and be able to edit easier because everything has the same time code. So if you're ever multi-camming or working with different cameras and different audio sources, they can all link up super easy. Now you also have the option to change your folder name and your file names. So you could go through and set specific codes for your folder or your files. So if you wanna have something that fits in with what you're shooting, you can go through and tweak some of the settings here. Now the next option is for screen off when recording. So when you hit record, it's gonna automatically turn the screen off. So when you click this, you could see that after three seconds, 15, 30, one minute, five minutes, or never. So I have mine set to never, so the screen is always turned on. But if you're doing something like a time lapse or a motion lapse, and you don't wanna have the screen on the entire time, you could just set it up here, set it to something like 10 seconds. You could see that the shot's working and then the screen will turn off, but the camera's gonna continue to work. Now, the next option is for auto power off. When you click this, you could set how long until that camera automatically turns off when it's left alone and it's not recording. So right now mine's set to five minutes, but you could change this to go all the way up to 30 minutes and all the way down to 30 seconds. So the camera will automatically power off if you're not doing anything with it, not touching it and not recording. Now the next option in your advanced menu is your LED. And so when you turn this off, it's gonna turn off the LEDs on the camera and the gimbal itself. When you turn this back on, you'll see that LED pop up right here on the front. Now underneath that is an option for continued live streaming. And so when you're hooked into the DJI Mimo app, you can live stream from the Pocket 3 and it makes it super easy to go live from this device anywhere when you're connected to your phone. Now next menu is for language. So you could change your language. You have the format, which is gonna format the memory card. 
And I love the fact that DJI put this very deep in the menu so there's no way of accidentally formatting this memory card when you're working with this gimbal because when you format, it deletes everything. Now at the bottom, you have your factory reset, you have info about your device, and you have some compliance info. So there's a ton of functionality just here in the gimbal and you can access everything without having to connect to your smartphone. However, we'll dig into the smartphone and I'll show you how you could use that in unison with this gimbal to be able to make it easier to film, especially when you're a solo creator. Now for this next section, I wanna do an overview of the DJI Mimo app. So you need to download this app onto your phone, turn on your gimbal, and then you'll see this homepage. And in the upper left-hand corner, there's a little camera icon for device. If you've already connected this, you'll see that it's turned blue, but if not, you'll see that the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 will pop up and it'll say connect. And then you'll just hit connect and go through the process of connecting your Pocket 3 to your phone. Now I'm gonna click the device icon and it's gonna to go to this main screen. Now right here, this yellow box, you're gonna see that there is a new firmware update available. So whenever there's an update for this camera, you'll wanna make sure to go through and update it for the new features, or these updates will fix any problems that might be happening within the gimbal. So on this main screen, you're gonna have all the same features that you had on the Pocket 3, they're just in a little bit different spot. So in the upper left-hand corner, you have your go back to home. So it goes back to that main home screen. Underneath that, you have your resolution and your frame rate if you're in video mode. And to switch from video mode to photo to time-lapse to any of the other modes, you have this whole scroll wheel on the left-hand side. So I'm gonna scroll over to photo. And now instead, now instead of frame rate resolution, it's gonna say eight megapixels and it shows 16 by nine. You could tap on this and you could change it to a one by one frame. And then underneath that, you'll see that you have your timed shot. If I flip back to video, now that turns into your glamour effect and we can turn this on and you can see the different options here for smoothing, brightening, slimming, changing your eyes, dark circles, nose, mouth, teeth, lipstick, brush, brows. So you could go through and modify each one of these settings and it's gonna beautify yourself. Now, I've never really used this, but the options are there if you do do a lot of vlogging and that's something that you want. Now, next to that, you'll see that there's the zoom feature. So when you click on this one X, you'll see that this bubble pops up and you push up and it zooms in and you pull down and it zooms out. Now in the lower left-hand corner, there's three dots and this is gonna bring up some of your advanced features. So here is where you're gonna find pro mode. You can turn this on and then a bunch of options are gonna pop up. So you have your grid, your focus mode, your white balance, your color, I'm gonna switch this over to 10 bit. Underneath that is color recovery. And this is gonna put a look on your footage. So you're seeing some contrast and saturation and not just the log footage that you get out of the camera. You're still gonna record in log though. Now underneath that, you'll have your channel, your overexposure alert, which is zebras on your footage. So now you can see that in the sky, it's overexposing in this part of the image. But if I expose for that section, you'll see that the rest of the image gets dark, but now that's not overexposing and there's no more zebras on the bright part of the sky. So you can turn this on and off. You wanna see parts of your image that are overexposing. Underneath that is your histogram. So this is all your exposure values from the left being the darkest to the bright being the whitest. And you'll see when I brighten up the image, all of those values are gonna to shift to the right. And I'm just tapping on the screen to change my exposure because I have it in the auto settings. And so this just works like your camera phone. You could tap anywhere, it's gonna set your exposure and it's gonna set your focus. And then you can bring the little sun up to bring the exposure up or down based on that spot. You can tap the X in the histogram and it'll go away. Now underneath the histogram, you have time code display. You turn that on and you'll see your time code. Now it's 852 because it's taking the time code from time of day on your phone. Now back in the advanced menu, you could go down to the little icon of the gimbal and it's gonna show this option for gimbal easy control. So with this turned off, you're gonna see two circles on the screen with arrows. The one on the right is gonna tilt your camera up and it's gonna tilt it down. Now, the one on the left is gonna pan left and pan right. So you have to use a combination of both of these to control your gimbal. Now, when you go back to your advanced menu, you can turn on gimbal easy control. And now you only have one circle with arrows and this goes in every direction. So you just use one finger and you can slide this around and control the gimbal in every direction. So it just depends on how you wanna control the gimbal using your phone. So if you wanna manually control your gimbal while you're not near your gimbal, this is a great way to set up a shot. So I could say set up a shot over here and then I could walk into frame and now I could do some A roll where I'm talking to camera and I've set up the shot manually using my phone instead of just using the gimbal. Now let's say I wanna shift this while well, I could just look down at my phone do a split shot between me and the camera. And now 
I have a better framing. And if we go back to the three dots, go back to the camera icon, turn on the grid and do grid lines. Now you can see that the camera is in one third and I'm in the other third, so it's a balanced shot. And this comes down to setting up different compositions so that not everything is dead center of your shot. I'm gonna turn off my grid lines and I'm gonna go back to my gimbal. And then the other option you have is for calibrate. Calibrate your gimbal here as well. Now in the bottom menu, you have your general options. So device management, SD card storage. This is where you can format your card if you wanna erase all the media. You can change your compression, Wi-Fi settings and about. So just some of those advanced features that you might need. Now I'm gonna tilt down so you can see everything on the screen. And in the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna see a few options. So the first is your signal strength between the gimbal and the phone. Next to that is your battery, then how much storage you have left on your SD card. You also have your microphone with the one. If you have two microphones connected, you'll see a two pop up here and you'll see that you'll have audio meters, even though they're tiny, just in that little icon when I'm talking because I'm using the DJI Mic 2 transmitter. Now in the upper right hand corner, this is where you switch between front facing camera and rotate back to vlog mode. Now below that, you'll have this button with the four arrows in the circle. So this recenters the gimbal. So I'm gonna pull the gimbal up and away, hit this button, and it's gonna recenter back to the middle. Now underneath that is the big red button. That's your shutter. So it's gonna be red when it's video. And when you switch over to photo, it will turn white. So it's either takes a photo or takes a video. Now underneath that is your gimbal settings. And you have two settings here. You have the little band running, and you also have the gimbal moving. So the, the running is where you could switch it between slow, medium and fast. And that's how quick the gimbal responds when you move it with your hand. Now, the other option is for your mode. So you have tilt lock, FPV and follow mode. So right here on the screen, you could change all these settings. Now underneath that, you have this two triangle button and this flips the screen to mirror what you're seeing. So you can mirror left and right. Underneath that is the little icon with the play button. This plays back all the footage on your micro SD card. So you can see when I go in here, I have all of my footage that I've previously recorded. And from the Mimo app, you can download all of these clips directly to your phone. Now in the bottom, you have all your exposure settings. So you have your shutter speed, your ISO, your exposure value. So this says it's two stops darker than what the camera thinks is the best look for the scene that I'm currently filming. And then I show my time code because I have my time code display on. If you want to change in your settings, you'll tap the auto button in the upper left hand corner and change it over to manual. Now you can set your ISO, your shutter, and your EV all manually. And so everything could be full auto, or you could switch over to manual, and then you can manually control your shutter. So if you wanna get more motion blur in your shot, you can set this up. Or if you wanna control and have a specific look, and you don't have the camera fluctuate around when you're filming. And if you want your camera to do auto ISO, but then manually set your shutter, well, you can set that up and then use your EV down here to adjust whether you think the auto needs to be brighter or darker from what the camera thinks is the best looking shot. Now, the last thing is just all of your buttons on the right hand side. It's all the same things that you find in the gimbal itself. However, hyperlapse and time lapse are split out from one menu. This is all the different modes that you have in the gimbal itself, except for now there is a live stream option. And so this is where you can turn on and live stream using your phone filming with the gimbal. And the last thing is tracking with the DJI Mimo app. So right now, anywhere on the screen, I could draw a box and it's gonna start tracking. So I'm gonna walk over here, I'm gonna stop this track and I'm gonna set up the shot. And let's say I wanna capture a shot of me walking into frame and I want the camera to follow. So I'm gonna track myself and it's gonna lock onto me and I'm gonna adjust the frame because with tracking, you could adjust the frame. Well, now I can move and the camera's gonna continually track me. So I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna walk this way. And so now the shot is of me walking and talking and you could do these dynamic shots without actually having to control the gimbal manually. It's doing it for you and it's just using that tracking feature and staying locked on. And the really cool thing is this makes it just easy to work as a solo creator and be able to get moving shots where you have this slow movement happening and the gimbal's just following you. So overall, the DJI Mimo app just unlocks some extra abilities to, to control the gimbal when you're not next to the gimbal. So you could put it off the other side of the room, down over there, down the field, set up your shot using the joysticks, and then you could go through and do things like active track or just hit record when you're away from the camera. And as a solo creator, this is a super helpful feature to be able to get dynamic looking footage and also to be able to set up everything easy without always having to touch the camera itself. This could be put anywhere and you could set it up using the DJI Mimo app.
All right, so now let's go over the different recording options you have on the Pocket 3. Let's start with the first one, which is video. This is the main thing that you use the Pocket 3 for. And so we've already gone over how you adjust all these features, frame rate resolution, and then you just hit record. Now this gimbal is limited to 4K 60 frames per second, 10-bit D-Log M420. Now when you switch over to photo, you could take photos in 16 by nine or one by one. The sensor is only an eight megapixel sensor, so you're limited on how big you can take your photos. And when you flip the gimbal vertically, you now have the option for nine by 16. So essentially you get that whole square image or you get a vertical or horizontal cutout. And you could just take a photo and it's gonna take a photo. And now when you use the time shot, let's say we go to three seconds, turn this on, it's gonna count down three, two, one, boom, take a photo. And then you have the option to do JPEG or RAW. Now the next option is panoramic. So you could set this up and it's gonna stitch together a series of photos and create a wide panoramic of the scene that you're in. So the different options you have is a wide panoramic or 180 panoramic. So I'm gonna hit the 180 and I'm gonna hit the shutter button and it's gonna start. And you wanna keep the device on a tripod or upright in a way where it's not moving. It's gonna go through, take a series of photos and then it's gonna stitch them together. Now the next option is for low light. So in low light mode, you're restricted to 4K 30 frames per second, and you also don't have access to active track. So in the low light, the camera's gonna find the best settings to give you a good look in lower light situations. When you're working with smaller sensors, even though this is a one inch sensor, you're still limited when you are in darker situations. So having this ability gives you just a little bit more range with this camera so you can get some low light scenes like these shots that I've been showing you when I was out camping. Now the next option is slow motion. So this is where you can access those slower features. You could do 4K up to 120 frames per second or 1080p up to 240. And when you turn this on, it just works like video. However, in this mode, when it's done recording, it makes a slow motion clip for you. And also in this mode, you don't have access to D-Log-M that's only available in video. Now the next option is time-lapse. And there's two different types of time-lapse that you could do. You could either have the camera just sit here and do a time-lapse. And so when this mode is turned on, you could set your resolution here on the side. Say you wanted to do 2.7K at 30 frames per second, or I'm gonna switch to horizontal mode. And now you have access up to, and now you have access up to 4K 30 frames per second. So when you're working with this gimbal, when you flip to vertical, you only have resolution up to 3K. It's only 4K in the horizontal mode. And so to set up your time-lapse, you'll click this button in the up top part of your frame and you could set your duration, your interval, how often you want the gimbal to take a photo, and then your time-lapse mode, whether it's fixed angle or it's gonna be a motion lapse. And for a motion lapse, you can have the camera go from left to right. You can have it go right to left or you could do a custom motion. And so when you do that, you're gonna move the gimbal to a spot and you're gonna hit the plus icon. And then you're gonna move the gimbal to another spot, hit the plus icon, move the gimbal to maybe a third spot and hit the plus icon, set the duration of how long you want this time-lapse to run and then the interval at which you want it to take a photo. And it's gonna show you at the top of the screen how long your finished clip will be. So I'm gonna run this for five hours and doing a shot every one second going to make a 10 minute clip. But if I was to do say a 20 minute shot at a three second interval, it'll make a 13 second clip. And then so you could go through and it's going to preview the shot for you and how the gimbal's going to move when you hit that preview button. And you could set this up whether you're using the DJI Mimo app or you could do it just in the gimbal itself. You don't have to have it connected to your phone. However, it is easier with the bigger screen to be able to set all of this up. Now, the last option you have access to is hyperlapse. And so this is a moving time lapse. And so what you'll want to do is turn this mode on and then you're going to start moving with the gimbal and so you'll walk around the location that you're at trying to keep the gimbal in the same direction for a longer period of time and then when you play it back it's going to speed up the whole action and it's going to make a hyperlapse and to set up how fast you want this hyperlapse to be you'll click the box where your resolution is and it's going to set up at the top your resolution your frame rate that you want the finished clip to be at, and then your speed. So you could go auto, 2X, 5X, 10X, 15X, or 30X. And you'll definitely wanna play with these different options to see how fast it moves and how long you have to record to get a long enough clip for the scene that you're in. So that's all the different recording modes that you have access to in the Pocket 3. And this just unlocks a lot of functionality to be able to use this in more ways than just a video camera. All right, so next let's go over the three different gimbal modes that you have access to. So you have follow, tilt lock, or FPV. And typically follow mode is the default. So if you tilt the gimbal forward or tilt the gimbal up, it's gonna tilt the camera down and it's gonna tilt the camera up. Now, if you pan the gimbal left or right, then the camera's gonna follow as well. So you'll use this to be able to tilt and pan at the same time 
depending on what the scene is that you're filming in. Now, the second mode is tilt lock. And I often use tilt lock when I'm filming because it's gonna keep the horizon level and it's also gonna keep the camera level unless you use the joystick to tilt it up or down. This way, you can have the camera pan around and follow you, but no matter how you move the gimbal up and down, it's not going to tilt. Now, FPV is just like follow mode. However, now the roll axis is also unlocked. So if you move side to side, you'll see that the horizon dips left and right. And so depending on what type of shot you're trying to capture, you're going to pick one of these modes. And oftentimes, if you're doing something like following a subject or just trying to get a nice pretty shot of a landscape, you'll keep it in tilt lock mode. But if you want to do a shot where you start at the ground and then you tilt up as you're at moving through a scene, you'll want to put it into follow mode. And at the end of this video, I put together a bunch of different gimbal shots that you can use and you're going to pick one of these three modes to be able to capture these shots. And so if you're trying to make a move with no tilt, put it in tilt lock. But if you're doing a move where you're going to be tilting forward and up, then you'll want to use the follow mode. And if you want to have something creative and you want to have that rolling motion, then put it in FPV mode so that you can completely be free with the gimbal and you have that sway dipping to the left and the right. Now there's actually a fourth mode that's kind of hidden. So let me flip around and show you. All right, so whether the camera's facing away from you or it's facing towards you, you could press and hold on the joystick and it's gonna lock all of your motors. So whether you're panning, tilting, or rolling, the camera's always gonna be facing forward. So when I let go, you could see that the camera's gonna start panning and following again. So I'll press and hold on the joystick and now whatever movement I do with the gimbal, it's always gonna be locked in that same direction. You can see how that camera is just staying in the same spot even though it's twisted. All right, so now let's talk about tracking because there's a few different ways you could use the active track in the Pocket 3. So when the camera's facing away from you, I'm gonna go over here to this trash can. I could just double tap on the screen. It's gonna find that trash can and now it's gonna track no matter what movement that I'm doing. Now, if you're using the DJI Mimo app, you'll just draw a box on your screen and it activates the same tracking. I click once on the joystick and the tracking is gonna be canceled. Now, when I turn the gimbal around to face myself, well, if my auto track is not turned on, what I could do is double tap on my face and it's gonna start tracking my face. Now I'll click to turn this off once on the joystick, pull down on my menu, pull up face track selfie on, and it's instantly gonna start tracking. So now I could walk around. I don't even really have to think about the gimbal and it's always gonna have me in the center of the shot. Now, when it comes to tracking, whether the camera's facing forward or it's facing you, you could shift the position of the track. So right now I'm dead center. I could use the joystick and I can shift myself off to the left. So now it's gonna to continue to track me, but keep me in that left third. Now, if I pull it over to the other direction, you'll see that it's now tracking me from the other side. And so as the camera moves, it's always gonna reposition itself so that it's finding putting me in that side of the shot. Now I can tilt down slightly or I could tilt up and it's going to continue to track. So you don't always have to be dead center when you're tracking you could shift the track around your frame to be able to create some more interesting compositions. Now there's two more tracking modes that you have access to and they're over here on the left-hand side of the screen. This little four arrows with the box and the circle, you'll tap this for these advanced shooting options. And the first one is face auto detect. So when this is turned on and you start recording, it's gonna start following faces that are in the shot. So whether you're forward or away, so I'll turn this around and now it's gonna start auto tracking because I'm in the frame. And once it's locked onto a face, it's gonna stay locked onto that face. So whether the camera is facing forward or backwards, this is a mode where the camera's gonna find that subject and start tracking them as soon as you hit record. Now the last tracking mode you have access to is called dynamic framing. You'll turn this on and you could use this whether the camera's facing you or facing away from you. And now you'll see that there's these nine boxes that have popped up. So you could select which box you wanna track from and that's where the tracking points are gonna be set. So I'm gonna set over here to the camera on the left-hand side, click enter, and now it's gonna be tracking that point that I've set using this dynamic framing. And so you have a bunch of different tracking options to be able to keep the camera moving and following your subject or just something in the frame so it can make it a lot easier for you to use this camera and create moving shots without always having to be so focused on the screen and making sure everything is in the frame exactly where you want it to be. When tracking's turned on, you can move around and the camera's gonna follow you so you could have more freedom with your movements and also you can create some interesting moves with the gimbal 
to be able to get good looking shots. And so when you're in the gimbal moves later on in this video, think of ways that you can add in the active track to make some of these work a little bit easier instead of doing all the moves manually. The next mode we need to talk about is spin shot. So in the same menu as your dynamic tracking, you have this ability to spin the camera. And so what this does is it's gonna put the camera in flashlight mode and then the camera's gonna spin in 180 degrees or 90 degrees to create the shot where the world is spinning. And so either what you'll do is have the camera just sit there stable or you'll move forward or backwards. So I'll put this into 180 and I wanna go into flashlight mode, which is facing straight out. And then I'm pointed at the camera and I could tap these arrows on the screen and the camera is gonna go through and auto rotate. So it creates this really interesting twisting effect something fun to play around with and try moving forwards and backwards while you're using this. So you could get that kind of motion of the whole world spinning as it's twisting and moving. All right, so now let's talk about the DJI Mic 2. And I've been using that to record everything outside when I'm filming out here in the park. Now this is very similar to the original DJI mic, however it's been redesigned with this new look and you can see that there's a new microphone on top. There's also an input port on top of the microphone where you can plug in a lavalier mic if you don't wanna use it like I'm using it now where the transmitter itself is the microphone. Now on the side of this microphone, you're gonna see a USB-C and this USB-C is how you're gonna be able to charge the DJI mic transmitter and it's also gonna be how you pull the data off when you're doing backup recording. Now there's also a record button. So you can either have this set up to record every time you hit record on the Osmo Pocket 3 or you can record just using the backup recording feature and clicking the red button on the side of this transmitter. On the other side, you have two buttons. One is your power button, so that's how you're gonna turn it on and turn it off. And then on top of that is your link button. So when you first turn on your transmitter, you'll press and hold that link button until the blue light is flashing. And then you'll go into the menu on your Pocket 3, go to that advanced menu, go to wireless mic, and then you'll click transmitter one or transmitter two, and then you'll just wait for it to pair automatically. And once it's paired, you'll hit confirm. It's gonna show you your battery percentage, and it's also gonna show you how much data you have left on the internal memory. Now, some of the other features you have access to is one, the LEDs. So you could turn these LEDs on or off. You have that vibration. So this will actually vibrate when it's recording or it's not recording. And then you have audio to video sync. So every time you hit record on the Pocket 3, this is gonna start a backup recording. So you always have a backup whenever you're recording on the Pocket 3. Now underneath that, you have your low cut. So if you wanna add a low cut filter to the audio, instead of doing it in your editing software, you could do it here. And then you have 32-bit float recording. When you turn this on, you have more data. It's gonna allow you to edit this audio a, a little bit better. And you're not gonna have to worry about things like your audio clipping if you're getting too high when you're recording. Now also, you have your format transmitter down here. You could do transmitter one or transmitter two, and this just deletes everything off the transmitter itself. So super simple and easy, but a lot of flexibility when you're recording because it's gonna automatically sync to your Pocket 3, or you could use it just as a standalone recorder. So for this beginner's guide, I'm recording all the audio out here using this, and I'm just doing a backup recording even though the Pocket 3 is not recording. And so now I could just use this audio, sync it with my camera here, sync it with this camera, and I always have clean audio on me no matter what happens. Even if I turn around, walk away, go way off in the distance, I'm always gonna have clean audio. Now let's go into the biggest mistake that creators will make when you're working with the Pocket 3. And this is moving the gimbal around too much when you're trying to get smooth footage. Now, this is because the Pocket 3 is so small. When you work with a bigger gimbal with a bigger camera, it's more weight and there's less opportunity for the camera to bounce around. The Pocket 3 is so small and lightweight that you could swing this camera around. And even though it might seem like you're getting a smooth shot, you're gonna see a lot of bounce up and down when you're working with this gimbal. So the biggest mistake is not practicing your movements properly. And also when you're working with this gimbal, just thinking that you're gonna get smooth footage by turning on the camera and pressing record. The biggest thing when it comes to gimbals is they're a tool to get smooth footage, but they're not gonna be perfect in every setting and every way that you move. So one of the biggest things that you have to look out for is the gimbal wobble. And that's when the gimbal's moving up and down. Because with the gimbal, you have three axes of stabilization. However, moving up and down, especially especially when you're walking or running, that is a fourth axis of stabilization. And to be able to get out any movement up and down, you have to use your arm. So it's not actually in the gimbal itself. So whenever you're doing a gimbal move, whether 
you're walking, moving, sliding, you want to try to keep the gimbal on the same plane of motion unless you're intentionally moving up or down. Otherwise, you're going to see this bobble in your shot. And that is one movement that you can't remove using a gimbal and it takes practice and it takes figuring out how to walk properly with your gimbal so you can get super smooth footage. So I highly suggest one of the things that you're gonna wanna do is go out and practice different gimbal moves and really practice trying to get rid of this bobble. And it's gonna come from your walk. And so to eliminate this bobble, you're just gonna wanna learn how to walk properly. And then in the next section, I'm gonna show you two different methods to walk with a gimbal, no matter which gimbal you're working with. All movement with a gimbal is the same, whether you're using a tiny little pocket three gimbal or you're using a big massive gimbal that has all these components attached to it and weighs super heavy. You still are gonna wanna move in the same way to be able to get smooth shots. All right, so now let's talk about the gimbal walk. I kind of alluded to this a little bit in the last section, but you wanna be able to walk in a way that's gonna allow you to shoot for longer periods of time while not hurting your body. Because if you're always hunched over and you're trying to get lots of shots, well, your back's gonna get fried and you're not gonna be able to shoot for long periods of time. So let me walk back here and let me show you kind of two ways to do your gimbal walk. You're gonna hear a lot of creators say that you should walk like a ninja. And instinctively, when people do that, they kind of get down low and they hunch over and they start walking. And yes, that's gonna get you super smooth footage, but look at my form. I'm like bent over here. I'm like bent weird down here. I'm putting strain in my legs and my back. So I'm not gonna be able to operate for long periods of time. Whereas the point of getting a smooth walk is so that your Z axis doesn't bump up and down. So ideally, what you're trying to do is make sure that your arms are right here and that the camera doesn't do this. Because with a gimbal, you're gonna have the three axis that keeps it completely stable no matter what you're doing. However, there's no Z axis. So your Z axis is your arms and your body. And so when you're walking, there's a little bit of bounce to your walk. And if you're not controlling your movement up and down, well, you're gonna see that in your footage. You're gonna see a lot of bounce up and down. And so when you're walking, the goal is to make sure that the camera stays perfectly level. And so that ninja walk, it tries to get you in a position where you can keep the camera super level, but it's gonna hurt your back, it's gonna hurt your legs, you're not gonna be able to operate for long periods of time. So if you're doing short bursts, you could get down low and you could walk really steady and the shot's gonna be super smooth. But if you're gonna be operating for longer periods of time, what you're gonna to wanna to do is just control using your arms, not having the gimbal super far out extended, keeping it close to your body, having a little bit of space to move up and down, and then you're gonna to wanna to walk heel to toe. So you're keeping yourself upright, camera's close to you, but if you notice, there's no bounce in the camera. And so it's almost like you're speed walking. You know, when you see runners, you'll see them run, there's lots of bounce there. But have you ever seen a speed walker? They walk super fast, it's kind of like upright. So you're trying to think more like speed walker versus a runner. And if you're trying to move slow, this is super easy. You just keep yourself upright, roll your shoulders back, kind of have that upright position and just heel to toe. Try not to put strain on your legs or your back so that you could do this for long periods. And then when you start moving faster, you're just gonna try to do this motion and learn to walk faster, kind of this heel to toe structure. So ideally, when you're doing the gimbal walk, you wanna make sure that you're not hurting yourself in any way. So you wanna try to not hunch over and you wanna try to do the gimbal walk where it's more upright, you stay smooth, you heel toe your feet and you're not bending. However, if you do need to bend over and do that ninja walk, it does work too. It's just you can't do that for long periods of time. However, you might find that you could get some super smooth shots with it. So just keep in mind when you're working with a gimbal, it is physical. So you will tire out over time and the way that you move your body is really gonna impact how smooth your shots are. For this next section, we're gonna go through a bunch of different gimbal moves so that you could get some really interesting footage when you're working with the Pocket 3. It's just like any other gimbal out there. So whether you see someone working with a Pocket 3, a smartphone gimbal, a big giant RS3 Pro with a big camera on it, it doesn't matter. All the moves are the same. And it's just how you manipulate the gimbal in space to be able to 
create these interesting shots. So here's just a library of shots for you to go out and start trying and start playing around with these and practicing all of these shots with your pocket three. Now, number one is the push forward. And this is like the essential gimbal move that you see whenever you see someone working with a gimbal. And to do this movement, you walk forward in space with your camera at the same level. The idea is that you're pushing in on the subject that you're filming. Now, the second shot is the pull back. So this is where you start close on a subject and then do the opposite. So you're just gonna walk backwards away from that object. And as you're walking, you're gonna see more of the scene. Number three is the slider. And this is where you're gonna keep your gimbal level and you're gonna move left or right. So it mimics like a slider or a dolly shot that you would see in a movie. And a cool thing that you can do is pair this with a reveal. So start from behind an object and then slide out to reveal the scene. And also one tip when doing the reveal is lock your focus to the background of the end of the shot so that your focus isn't pinging between the foregrounded element and the background that you are revealing. Now the next move is the sidestep or the dolly. So you're gonna have a shot straight out in front of you and then you're gonna walk to the side. So if I'm pointed this way, get in an upright position and you could walk whatever's gonna be the best way to keep a nice smooth shot. So I'm crossing my feet right now or you could put yourself on the side of the camera and walk forwards or backwards. But the idea with this shot is you see a landscape off in the distance or a subject like this tree and you're going to be sliding across it. It's called a dolly shot. Number five is the low shot. You can get it super low and keep it just above the ground. This is going to show a ton of motion in your shot. And then if you pair it with a scene like this, well, you can add a reveal and it shows this grand landscape that's out over this cliff. Now, number six is the follow. And this is where you're following a person or an object or something in motion. And with this, you just wanna follow right behind your subject and try to keep your distance. It's kind of that third person point of view as they're moving through the space. Now with this move, if they turn, well, you'll wanna turn with them. So you're kind of glued to their back and you're following them throughout the entire scene. Now the next move is just a simple pan. So you wanna keep yourself in one position and get the camera close to you so that it's not a ton of weight out front. And then you're either gonna use your joystick to pan the camera left or right, or you could use your body movements. I'm gonna start over here and I'm just gonna pan slowly. And you're gonna see as I pan past the camera, revealing the scene out in front of me. Just a super smooth way to get a nice pan shot of a landscape. Number eight, it's a follow. However, you're gonna be moving at a different pace than your subject. So for this shot, I'm following Jesse, but I'm also gonna be moving around him. And so you could play around with the motion where you're adding in this orbit feel around your subject while also keeping pace as they're moving through the scene. Now the next shot is a down to up. And so I'm pointed at this tree and what the move is, is I'm gonna walk forward and tilt down into the tree. And you could do the same thing from down to up. So I'm gonna have the camera down. You can see my shadow and I'm skimming along the ground and then I'm coming up to reveal the tree. And number 10 is the look up. So if you're filming with a subject or you have something cool like these metal sculptures, well, instead of always keeping the camera at eye level, put the camera down low and look up because you get this really cool perspective that you don't normally see. And using a gimbal, you can get these shots where you're looking up in the sky fairly easily. Now with this move, think of where the sun is, because if you put the sun behind your subject, well, you can use that. And as you rotate around doing an orbit move, you can have the sun flare and create a really cool effect. Now, the next one is the classic orbit. And that's where you keep your subject center and you basically move in an arc around that subject. And I'm just gonna try to keep equal distance between me and the tree and I'm gonna walk in a circle as I go around the tree and arc with the gimbal. So you're creating a nice smooth arc motion that's going around your subject. And you can either focus on something specific or just a point out in the distance. Now the next mode is the vlog mode. So click three times and you could vlog with a gimbal. And so you can see as I'm walking around, it's so smooth. Now the last mode that I wanna show you is a jib. And so this is where you start low and go high. 
And so this is a great tool to use if you want to come from behind an object and then come up and reveal the scene. So if I was somewhere here with this tall grass, I could start down low in the grass and then move myself up to reveal the tree in the distance. And I'm moving my arms in a huge arc from super low to super high. So that is everything that you need to know to get up and running fast with your DJI Pocket 3. I know there was a ton of information packed into this video, but now that you understand everything around how the gimbal functions and how you work with a gimbal, then you'll be able to get some really good looking footage and really stable looking footage so you can take full advantage of the power of working with a gimbal. And if you're someone who's gonna be using your Pocket 3 for your YouTube channel, well, I have an entire course series that teaches you YouTube and teaches you everything that I've learned growing this channel to over 1 million subscribers. You could check it out over on the Creator Film School. And also if you want to have some LUTs to be able to color grade your footage for your D-Log M footage, I'll include a link down below the description to where you could check out my D-Log M LUTs that will work great with the Pocket 3. And next, you should check out this video right here, which goes through pro versus beginner gimbal moves and some things that you should think about when you're working with a gimbal, no matter what size gimbal that you're working with. I'll see you over there.